So the attacker has a gun in his uh, waistband, and in order for him to pull the gun out, he has to touch it first, the arm has to bend, and then he can draw the weapon and point it at me, right? So when he does that, of course, now I'm in trouble because I'm in what's called the line of fire. Maybe his finger's on the trigger because he doesn't know, like Nathan and I know, perhaps, you know, how to keep a safety outside the trigger guard. But he's like this, and it's an attack scenario, and I can't outrun a bullet. So the idea here in the first side waistband gun defense classical jujitsu approach is before the weapon's even drawn, I take advantage of the position like this. Okay? So a lot is happening here. Let's break it down into some segmented discussion. When the hand touches, the elbow has to bend to withdraw. What that does do for me is open up this space in his body. And that's the main area that I want to focus on. Before I can get there and manipulate the arm, I'd like to establish a base. Because a base is everything. If I fall to the ground too soon, and I'm on my back and he's still standing and pointing the gun at me, perhaps someone somewhere has created a self-defense scenario that addresses that issue. I wouldn't mess with that. There's too much distance. Gravity's against me. And again, cannot run a bullet. So perhaps you just entirely at their mercy at that point. And the goal is survival, not to invite grievous harm or up to and including death, like our insurance waiver says. Right? So here's the gun in the belt. And as it's being held, before I even deal with this space, I establish a base. I step forward into base. Now, if I step forward directly into him, it's easy for him. He doesn't have to have to draw fully. He can lift the gun. And right here, I'm shot. We don't want that. So when I establish the base, the base should be established in an angular fashion. Because anytime I want to attack or defend, if I create a superior angle, it's better for me. So when Nathan starts to hold the gun and I step in the base, it's not this way. It's this way. A little bit around the corner. See, so he's still oriented here, but now I'm oriented this way. This also brings my forward arm close enough to insert through, palm up, this area here. And I go both hands at once. The bottom hand goes like this, and the top hand is over. Both of them are with no thumb. This cups so it can pull the elbow and flare it open. This cups so it can rake the shoulder forward. Doing that motion with just the strength of my body alone may work if I'm particularly strong and I've become reliant on that. But again, keeping in mind bigger, stronger attacker scenario, why not use the entire mass of my body just on his arm to move him into a more vulnerable spot? So I'm like this and obviously not showing any sign of aggression because that's what's going to excite the attacker and make him shoot faster. But as soon as he goes to move, I can step at the angle into base, and then both hands go. One up, one, one up, one down. Right? Inside and over. And now instead of pulling me here with just my arms to move him, I'm going to continue moving forward and perhaps act like this is the hinge of a door and open myself backwards a little bit, right? Create this circular spin. And look at this space right here. When I step out of the way, that's the space that he's going to go through. And because I'm holding under his elbow and around his shoulder, as I step and retract my arms to my body, it moves his head down and his arm up and back. Right? So now we get to here. And you see the arm is still straight, perhaps. And of course, he's going to be struggling. So I need to complete this movement by walking around the side until I can overlap, overlap the outside of the elbow with my rear hand. This now frees my first hand to look for the gun in the waistband and withdraw it. Okay, Or perhaps even keep it here. The primary objective is to secure and isolate the weapon, because that's the danger, right? He's not as much of the danger 
as the weapon is. So I've got to keep it away from his hands. So I'm not showing any aggression because I don't want to get shot. When he reaches for the gun, he gives me the open space and I establish a base outside his line of fire at 45 degrees. And as I do, both hands shoot, one up, one down, catching the tip of the elbow and the shoulder like this. From here, I retract my arms as I step around the corner and try to get his head low. And then I move behind him, keeping the arm in place so I can overwrap the elbow. Now I can hold the gun with my first hand and take it out. And either keep it out of the way, or if you're trained in firearms, you can keep it here, right? But don't give the gun too much, because he's not going to just sit here and cooperate. You get the gun too near him, he may, if he's lucky, and you don't have a strong grip here because you're focused on too many things at once, spin out and take the gun back from you. So either you keep it here, right, and you keep him bent, and you control the arm, or when you decide to let him go, you retreat without crossing the feet, keeping the gun leveled in the ready position. All right? That's it.